I grew up on dinosaurs. Hell, for a good majority of my life, I was planning on being a paleontologist. I was that annoying kid who could name practically every dinosaur. The kid that thought he was smarter than everyone else because I had dinosaur smarts. I was also the kid who watched Jurassic Park and had to say, fake and gay, when I saw the velociraptors. I had to point out to everyone watching that velociraptors were as big as a large chicken, and that the ones in the movie were more equal in size to that of Deinonychus. I'm sure we can blame that on splicing of the frog's DNA, but I love dinosaurs and I'm pretty sure I have watched and read the books more times than a young kid should. It's one of my favorite films and I can clearly remember the excitement the films brought me. So last year, when I heard that they were making a new game based around the first movie, the little me got all excited again. Now the game of course got delayed nearly a full year so they could work on improving it though. Now this really upset me and all I could think was, they're just making it better for you Trevor, be patient. Well now I beat the game and the question is, was it worth the wait? Back in the car. First, let's talk story. Do you remember the old, wonderful Dennis Nedry? He was the one working for Dachshund to steal the embryos in the Barbasol can, but then he was devoured by the Dilophosaurus. Which, to continue my nerdum, we have no proof that Dilo spit venom or had that neck frill. Also, they were much bigger too. See how annoying I was? Anyways, Dachshund sends in someone else to go find Nedry and get the embryos, which is where you step into the game. The game seems to pick up towards the end of the film, but features its own personal cast, not from the movies, except for Jerry Harding, who was the doctor aiding the sick trike in the movie. So basically, the main idea of the story is what happened to those embryos, and can we get them off the island while interacting with others on the island who are also trying to escape the ill-fated island. The story lets you take on three main groups of characters. Characters. First you have Nima, who is working for Dachshund and wants the embryos. Then there is Jerry Harding and his daughter, who get caught up while trying to get off the island, and then two other mercs who were sent in to save and rescue the survivors off the island. There is a few other characters, but those are the main ones. Now the game is played out more like a movie than an action game. You are not given control of just one character. You are placed in scenes from the game, which you can transition through by pressing different directions on the D-pad. The scene you select can then be explored using the camera. Within the environment are selectable items items that can move the story forward and help you solve puzzles. That's not to say that the game is slow paced and actionless. This actually allows the game to be more focused on story development and the game also throws some quick time event moments on you that can prove to get pretty intense if you ask me. Running from the raptors or trying to escape in a car from Dilophosaurus can become very edge of your seat moments. The game is very reminiscent of Heavy Rain. You spend more time getting immersed in the story and how to escape dire situations as opposed to running guns ablazing on dinosaurs that would have clearly ate you alive in the real world. When I see a game taking an idea from movies and working it into a new alternate story, I want it to feel as deep and real as the movies and not just another shooter. So it was nice to see Telltale focus on what we already know and add to it with new characters. The story fits well with the timeline and though the characters don't have rich backstories, we need to realize neither did the movies. They just gave us enough information about the characters that we could enjoy a good thrill ride and that's exactly what this game delivers. It's also very awesome as a fan to get to explore explore scenes from the movie, like Nedry's Jeep or the Visitor Center. The game also has some new locations to explore and a few new dinosaurs to add to the plot. I thought this was a great idea to explore because in the books a lot more ground was covered in the park than was in the movie, so it's not like they just threw random locations into the game that made no sense. It kind of, in my own opinion, harkened to the books and allowed us to explore deeper into the world of Jurassic Park. The game is also presented in four episodes. Originally the plan was to release an episode a month, but due to its delay we got them all at once here, though I do believe the iPod version is still being split up monthly. The gameplay I feel works perfect for this game. Yes, it is very linear, but that allows the story to follow the intended route and not get lost just exploring. It's hard to play a game that highly focuses on story but has little dialogue and huge sections of gameplay, wherein Telltale makes every action you make add more to the story. Some people may get bored of just searching the environment to advance the story if you can't get into the plot that Telltale has presented, but I personally enjoyed the story and beat the game in two sittings because I couldn't put the controller down due to wanting to know what the outcome of the survivors and what will happen to the embryos. I have no major complaints here. One thing I constantly struggled with though with the mechanics is during the quick time events that happen with dinosaurs, sometimes you may have to calm your breathing or pull yourself together by trying to keep a dot in this small circle area. 
for some reason I constantly failed those. They seem so much harder to do compared to the quick button presses. Maybe the intensity of trying to keep still while a T-Rex glares over me did me in, but I hated seeing that damn circle. One other thing that adds to replay value is as you play a scenario within an episode, at the top right is a metal system. As you work your way through that scene, the game will keep track of your failed button hits and awards you accordingly. It starts off as a gold medal and goes down to bronze, silver, and then of course no medal. I enjoyed this aspect because it did give you the opportunity to go back and work at a better medal for each scene. One of the things I dislike though is if you replay a section, there is no way to speed up or skip the dialogue, so you may have to wait a while to get to the exact replay point that you wanted. Telltale had allowed us to skip dialogue in games like Back to the Future, so I'm not sure why they didn't allow that here in this game. Now the game isn't perfect, and I'm going to hold it up to a higher standard knowing that they delayed it to make it better. When you delay a game, in my own opinion, when that game finally launches, it better be perfect. Now the graphics are fine. I think the dinosaur models looked great. The character models seemed a bit stiff here and there, but for Telltale normally doing cartoony games, this was nice to see they strayed away from that to make Jurassic Park feel more real. The voice acting was real good if you ask me. I did notice one of the voice actors to be none other than Max from the Goofy movies. Tell Carl Lewis I got some training tips for him. But overall, everyone's performance was great. One of the main focuses is Jerry Harding and his daughter, and they really shined and carried the plot if you ask me. Now sound is a whole other issue though. The dinosaurs of course sound great, and they use the sounds from the movies. The environment surrounding the jungle sound great, but the music, the music seems to cut in and out at the worst time, really killing the mood. A specific song from the movie may be playing as you are running from raptors, but then when the camera changes, even if the first song is still in its climax, it's quickly ripped away and replaced by another song. I really don't understand how they let that get by because it happens often. The character voices at time will crackle in and out. This isn't often, but it really seemed like it could have been avoidable. I've got a plan. You're gonna love this. Also here and there, the game suffered with delayed screen changes and frame rate issues. It was nothing huge, but you may press a button in a high action scene just to see it skip a bit or just pause. Those pauses caused me to panic a few times thinking I had hit the wrong button and the game was just loading the dinosaur death attack, but that normally wasn't the case. This may just be a console thing because I had the same issues with the PlayStation 3 version of Back to the Future and not on my PC. I'm not really sure though. I think Telltale did a great job adding to the already excellent Jurassic Park franchise. You definitely need to walk into it expecting a well-told story and not an adventure game though, otherwise you're going to be highly disappointed. A few moments can come off a little over the top, like a mercenary fighting a raptor one-on-one -on -one with his bare hands, but at least those moments made great playable quick time event moments. The idea was to add to the series and create a new story, not make you Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Like I said, there is some replay value there to strive for perfection. A return to the park that fans will love, some awesome kills involving the dinosaurs, and some easy achievements for you achievement hunters. Not to mention the game is only $40 versus the full retail price. There clearly are some stiff moments here and there, but if you are a fan of the movies, I am sure you will enjoy Jurassic Park the game. Trevor Clark has had his say to help you find good games to play. Game reviews, tattoos, and news. Pony noobs you'll never lose